Comedy is a rare and skilled art form that truly does enrich the human condition, and laughter is a precious gift to be treasured by one and all. Through the ages, those blessed with comic skills are always remembered fondly, and perhaps none more so than Laurel and Hardy. This great transatlantic partnership thrilled audiences worldwide throughout the 20th century and is still continuing to entertain new generations of Stan and Ollie fans to this very day. On screen, the jolly, round, tie-twiddling persona of Oliver Hardy and the bemused, head-scratching, wiry Stan Laurel have a childlike innocence that never dates. However, the true stories of the men behind the legends are absolutely fascinating, and as you delve into the biographical nitty-gritty, there are plenty of surprises to uncover. Stan Laurel was born in Ulverston, Lancashire, England, on the 16th of June, 1890, in this unremarkable terraced house. On Stan's birth certificate, his father's occupation is noted as a comedian, certainly a far cry from the norm in a working-class area of Victorian Lancashire. When Stan was a boy, his father was manager of a Glasgow theatre, and it wasn't long before his son took his first tentative steps onto the stage. Not being much of a scholar, Stan was drawn by the smell of the grease paint and the roar of the crowd. And when he set sail for America with a troupe of English music hall artists, he shared a cabin with another unknown comedian in search of fame and fortune. No, it wasn't Oliver Hardy. It was none other than a very young Charlie Chaplin and fate shone kindly on both performers. Oliver Hardy was actually born in Harlem, Georgia, USA. Weighing in at an enormous 14 pounds, he was indeed a bouncing baby, and in later years, when Ollie entered the film business, his nickname, Babe, was how he was known. Laurel and Hardy didn't work together until Stan was 37 and Ollie 35 and both had done their fair share of living by this time. It's not unusual for movie stars to have complex love lives, but Laurel and Hardy don't instantly spring to mind as belonging to the ranks of legendary Lotharios, but there's more to these two than might at first meet the eye. Ollie was married three times, but there were various romantic liaisons that never got as far as the altar. But it was Stan who really had a remarkable track record with the ladies. Stan's first wife was of the common law variety, but when it came to alimony, she didn't let a little thing like a marriage certificate get in her way. The second wife, the first bona fide Mrs. Laurel, didn't last long, as Stan married the third Mrs. Laurel before he divorced her. He then married number three a second time, just to make sure, but refused to give up his long-term mistress. So number three divorced him, and Stan fell into the arms of a Russian temptress who became the fourth Mrs. Laurel. However, something was evidently lost in the translation, because this came to a sorry end, and after the divorce, Stan remarried number three. Now, technically, she was number two, but as he'd married her in two ceremonies first time round, was she marrying him for the third time to distinguish herself as the second official and fifth Mrs. Laurel? No wonder Stan always looked so bemused in his movies. He was probably trying to remember who he was married to. 
not that the saga finished here, of course. Whether second, third or fifth wife mattered very little, as this marriage ended in yet another divorce. Fortunately, Stan did eventually find happiness, and the last Mrs Laurel stayed with him for the rest of his life. Which is exactly what happened to Ollie, because it truly was third time lucky in the matrimonial stakes for him. For those who want to enjoy Laurel and Hardy's movies, there are collector's editions available, and to watch their timeless comedy antics will always raise a smile. The idea of a Laurel and Hardy museum might seem a little incongruous for these undisputed kings of comedy, but think again, because laughter is the key ingredient in these museums, whichever side of the Atlantic you happen to be. Stan's birthplace, Ulverston, has a wonderful Laurel and Hardy Museum, as does Harlem, Georgia, where Ollie was born, and both locations are worthy of further investigation. When Bill Cubin, a lifelong Laurel and Hardy fan, became mayor of Ulverston in the 1970s, he had a plaque commemorating Stan Laurel's birthplace erected outside the Argyle Street house. With a growing collection of Laurel and Hardy memorabilia, Bill Cubin's passion for his two comedy heroes grew and grew, until eventually the Laurel and Hardy Museum came into being. Sadly, Bill Cubin has now passed away, but his wonderful legacy continues in the capable hands of his daughter Marion, who is the best person to tell us about the museum. The museum started because my father was an enormous Laurel and Hardy fan and he always felt it was wrong there was no recognition of Stan Laurel in the town of his birth, Ulverston. When he was mayor of Ulverston in 1975, he declared to the world I have the authority I'm putting a plaque on Stan Laurel's house. Because of the plaque, he got to meet a lot of people connected with Laurel and Hardy and the collection he'd started just grew and grew and people started coming to see it and he would say, this is come and see my collection of Laurel and Hardy memorabilia. And he started opening it up the odd Saturday in the summer. And now we're open seven days a week, 11 months of the year. And it like tops it, it just grows. We call it the hobby that got out of hand, basically. I was always involved on, on the outskirts of the, of the museum. It was very much a family thing. My father was a, a big character. He was an amazing man. I was very fortunate to have him as a father. And he loved Laurel and Hardy and the whole family became involved in it. He, I then started working in the museum, um, just to help him out really. And then when he died, I had the option of taking it on and carrying on where he left off, which I did willingly. And I'm glad to say now my son is following on and he's going to take over from when it's going to stay in the family and the museum's going to be here forever, we hope. Memorabilia has come from every source imaginable. I mean, my dad was an, an avid collector. He travelled, he went to America, he went all over Europe collecting Laurel and Hardy memorabilia. And things are still coming in and people come to the museum and enjoy their visits so much that they go home and say, next time I go to the museum, I'll, I'll take them something. And people bring in signed autographs and letters and bits of memorabilia, which is added to the collection. One thing we do say is that once it's here, it'll never, it'll never go. We have no intention of ever selling anything on. And we buy things occasionally, if we possibly afford it. <laughs> we just spend a fortune on, on some memorabilia. So the collection is growing all the time, and hopefully it will carry on growing. When my father started with the museum, it was just a private collection. As I say, the hobby that got out of hand, and it was just in one small room, which is the central room of the museum now. And that was growing and growing and getting fuller and fuller. I used to live in the flat upstairs and the room next to, to the, the central room, which is now the cinema, was my own washroom. I used to keep my washer and freezer and tumble dryer in there and Dad came up to me one day and said, Barry, you'll have to leave your washer because I'm going to have a cinema in there. So it was a case of <laughs> the museum comes first in everything. And then later on we added the, 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 the bigger room and that's now full as well, so whether we'll ever expand any further, I've no idea, but we are running out of wall space. 
<laughs> even ceiling space. <laughs> As you can see for yourself, every square inch of space here is covered in Laurel and Hardy pictures, posters, documents and paraphernalia. But you needn't worry about missing anything. Marion and her sons are always happy to show visitors around and share the delightful Laurel and Hardy anecdotes that Bill Cuban had collected over the years. My father is Laurel and Hardy Museum. I mean, it's, it was very much his museum. It still is very much his museum. When he first started, we didn't get a lot of support from the town, but we didn't need a support from the town. He, Dad never did anything by halves and he was, as I say, a big character and did everything full on. He, he never did anything half-heartedly. And the museum is very much the Cuban family, <laughs> which is, and we've had, we've had support from the town, but we are totally, totally independent from anybody else, which we think is lovely. We enjoy it that way. It's obvious that this museum is truly a labour of love and, just like Laurel and Hardy's wonderful movies, the future of the museum is most definitely assured. The future of the museum, I think, is just to carry on growing, to carry on being the museum it is. I'm glad to say we have a lot of people come and they come back. And our biggest advert is word of mouth, I'm glad to say. People come away with a smile on the face, tell their friends about it and they come. And all I ask of the museum is for it to take over the way it is. You know, I'm not asking to make a fortune, I'm not asking for it to be equivalent to a museum in the heart of London. I just, we just want to be the Laurel Hardy Museum in Alverston, where Stan was born. And that's really all we ask of it, and that's, that, that's all I hope for, which is enough. <laughs> Because this Laurel and Hardy Museum is in Stan's hometown, it's a little more geared towards his side of the story. But whatever the Ulverston Museum does for Laurel, the museum in Harlem, Georgia, reciprocates for Hardy. For most people, the mention of Harlem triggers images of New York. But Oliver Hardy's Harlem, in the Deep South, was named by a visitor from the Big Apple who thought the place reminded him of home. Like many parts of America, the town's history is relatively young, as Harlem was founded in 1870, not all that long before Oliver Hardy's birth. The Laurel and Hardy Museum of Harlem, to give the full title, is a work in progress, and the exhibits are growing on a daily basis as memorabilia is collected from all over the world. You'll find a charming cinema here, just like the one in Ulverston, and laughter rings out whenever Stan and Ollie's movies are showing. There's a nice pickle we're in. It doesn't Shot matter sunrise. age, gender or culture. Laurel and Hardy will appeal on a multitude of levels, from good old-fashioned nostalgia right through to thrilling new generations of comedy enthusiasts. For those who want to pay homage to Laurel and Hardy by visiting their graves, a trip to Hollywood is the order of the day. Oliver Hardy died in 1957 and his ashes were interned in the Garden of Hope Valhalla Memorial Park, North Hollywood. Stan outlived Ollie but missed his old friend terribly and when he suffered a heart attack in 1965, he died soon afterwards. Stan's memorial can be found at Forest Lawn Cemetery and there's a poignant plaque marking his final resting place. The simple words, which commemorate both Stan and Dolly, are the perfect epitaph for the best comedy double act that the world has ever known and, for that matter, is ever likely to know. Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy gave the precious gift of laughter to everyone who watched their films. And thanks to the enduring magic of celluloid, it's laughter that will never die.